I hope that you understood this mean, median and mode. Now I just wanted to discuss about the measures of spread. Before I'm going to discuss about the measures of spread, shall I ask you one or two questions about the previous session? What is the best measure of centrality? Each and everyone has to give the answer to me. Each and everyone. The best measure of centrality is median. The best measure of centrality is median when it's compared to mean. Mode is a different kind of uh, measurement of a central tendency that that are always uh, best preferable for the repeated values. Okay, whereas the rest of others are not. Got it? And can you please tell me like uh, any three different variables, three different types of variables? Nominal. Okay, dependent and independent is another way of telling something. See, nominal, discrete, binary. Forgot, you forgot about the different types of variables which I discussed. Guys, this is what I'm saying. You should be 100% in my session. Look, nominal, ordinal, binary, huh? which I already discussed, right or wrong? Discrete and continuous. Okay? Hmm? Okay. So we understood this part. Okay, now tell me, when I ask you, how many numbers are in between uh, 0 and 1? What kind of question is it related to? Is it related to discrete or continuous? Kiran, right answer. Dinesh, right answer. Syed, right answer. Syed, wrong answer. Venkat Narayana, right answer. Guys, it is not discrete, it is continuous. It is continuous. When I say like how many numbers are there in between 0 and 1, there are infinity numbers. Infinity. Point not 1, point not not 1, point not 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 1. Something like that. We have infinity values. The infinity measurement values are, con are considered under continuous variables, not the discrete variables. Okay? We are just learning mathematics, which is a plus two level mathematics. We are not learning something which is an advanced mathematics or PhD mathematics. Please remember this part, okay? So we have four different measures of spread, range, interquartile range, and variance and standard deviation. Okay, I just wanted to finish all these four together. So can you let us see the range? Before I'm going to talk about range, Okay, I have a, a very decent example here. So here, here, this is what guys, we can see two different quiz. Okay, quiz, quizzes conducted for two different classroom students. Okay, otherwise we can consider that we have, we have conducted two different quiz for the same classroom people. Okay, and this is how the scores are. Whereas for the quiz one, Two people got the score of five. Six people got the score of six. Seven people, five people got the score seven. Four people got the score eight. Three people got the score nine. Okay, whereas for the quiz two, this is how the results. Can you please tell me which is more spread? Excellent. We have the quiz two, which is more spread. Same number of students, but a different quiz. Right or wrong? Which is more compact? Quiz one. Okay, very good. The most compact is the quiz one. Okay, you can see like all the, all the scores are, you know, very compact and close together when it is compared to the quiz 2. So now, my question is, how well the visualization part when we are looking at it? 
how well the visualization part when we are looking at by by looking at it we can we can immediately understand you know the content right or wrong okay so but let us understand how we need to understand the measure of spread by using range interquartile range variance and standard deviation right or wrong we need to have the specific value or an output to decide or conclude something right or wrong so hence we need to go to the range the most basic measure of variation okay where which is the largest value minus smallest value okay largest value minus smallest value where you can see that for the distribution of the scores of quiz 1 and quiz 2 the range is range equal to 9 to 5 is equal to 4 okay 10 10 to 4 10 minus 4 is equal to 6 for the quiz 2 but the quiz 1 it is 9 minus 5 is equal to 4 which is having the more value or the range quiz to have the more range so when you have the more range obviously it is more spread okay now let us understand the interquartile range guys this is a little bit tricky please take a concentration here the interquartile range is the range of middle 50 percent scores in the distribution now take a look at this one this is the lowest value what is the lowest value here four sorry here what is the lowest value five right or wrong huh here what is the highest value nine okay so what else that we have to do take a median which is a middle person between lowest value and the highest value take a median okay and then identify the middle value between the lowest value and the q2 median okay which is q1 and, and understand the q2 and highest value means which is an average between q2 and highest value right or wrong hmm? So, take an Q3 minus Q1, which will give you the interquartile range. Okay, as a part of it, if you just take a look at this. Can you please tell me the IQR for Q1? Five is lowest number. Nine is highest number. What is the median? Median will become seven. What is the Q1? 6. Q3? 8. Q3 minus Q1? 8 minus 6, which is 2. Let us calculate IQR for quiz 2. What is the middle value? 7, which is a median. But we here you can see <clears throat> 5, 6. Let us take average of this so that we will get the right middle value. 5.5. Here it is 8.5. 8.5 minus 5.5. How much is the IQR for quiz 2? 3. So, what is the... Which, is, which quiz is more spread? <clears throat> quiz 2 has the more spread why because quiz 2 has the iqr 3 whereas quiz 1 has the iqr 1 sorry one it's not one two it is two right see you can observe identify the just we have done this one now let us see the variance so variance is a very important part guys Remember this one, the a variance is nothing but the average squared difference of the scores from the mean. The average squared difference of the scores from the mean. Understand? Variance is nothing but the average squared difference of the scores from the mean. C 
sigma square represents the variance is equal to sum of square the difference of the scores from the mean mean is mu okay from the scores so scores represents x okay A average represents n total number of values did you understand this formula or not give me the fast answer understand if you don't understand the formula how it was written you you can't understand the subject this is for sure if you want me to re-explain, I am very happy to re-explain. But I need some response. Okay. So guys, again, please take your understand here. Variance is average squared difference of the scores from the mean. Look first, squared difference. Forget about average, forget about square difference of the scores from the mean difference of the scores from the mean means x minus mu right or wrong huh? squared means whole square okay average means see average means sum of all the difference of the scores from the mean divided by total number of values right or wrong Huh? Okay. So let's make the formula. Now tell me, now tell me, did you understand? Everyone. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So now let us uh, uh, solve the same problem quiz one and quiz two problem so guys and i also wanted to highlight one thing for population data means when we are collecting the complete data remember it is divided by n and also the sigma represents sigma square represents whereas for sample standard for, for sample variance we will represent with small s and the mean is representing with the, see why because these are all the variable names we can change however we want but denominator changes to n minus one why it was changed i will tell you the concept if the variance in a sample do you know what is what is what is the uh, what is the difference between the population and sample if any one of you don't know please say no do you know what do you mean by population and what do you mean by sample? The people who don't know, okay, I will explain you, okay. So guys, so for example, I'm trying to calculate some people's interest in voting the current government, okay. So I'm going to do a one survey or a poll. Okay. If I just wanted to consider the entire people of the nation, that is a population data. Population data means complete data. Complete data of the activity that you are going to perform as a part of statistic. For example, if I just wanted to pick, why, see, why because as a part of poll or a survey, I can't go to each and every individual person whose age is more than 18. And I can't do the survey. Why? Because it is a very difficult and peculiar task. Hence, what I will do, I will, I will go to one area I, and I will take a, a sample out of it. How do I take a sample? Again, for taking a sample, there is a very big concept. Okay, if I'm going to one area, okay, what kind of area is it? Is it a village or is it a town or is it an urban? Okay, and what kind of people are living? Okay, are the people living are, you know, mostly villagers? I mean, I mean, who is in, who is in the farming field? If, if they are farmers, 
that I need to uh, definitely take a look how much percentage of the farmers. If, if there are only 80% of the farmers and 20% of the uh, other people guys, okay, I need to concentrate on the farmers. Understand or not? So based upon the 80%, I may take the feedback of some 80 people or 20 people, something like that. So this is generally called as a sample. Did you understand now? When I'm going to take a sample data and if I'm going to approximate the population variance, okay, If I'm going to take a sample data and if I just wanted to estimate the population uh, variance, okay, so we should take the n minus one as a denominator. Why? Because in order to not to underestimate the value that you are going to get using the sample. Right or wrong? So that's why I have written clearly over here. If the variance in a sample is used to estimate the variance in a population, it is important to note that the samples are consistently less variable than their populations. So the sample variability gives a, gives a biased estimation of the population variability. Biased estimation means inclined estimation. This bias is in the direction of underestimating the population value in order to adjust this consistent underestimation of the population variance we divide the sum of the square deviation by n minus 1 instead of n very important interview question you will be asked for sure with a 90 percent chances of asking this question even if not in the interview when you are going to prepare for any certification examination this is a very important concept that you have to understand why you have the n minus 1 in the denominator for sample variance so we understand so let, let us let me show you how does this calculation goes ahead so i'm trying to calculate the variance okay you can see the scores 999 why 999 here you can see nine has has came to three people right or wrong eight came for four people that's why i'm listing out all the stuff okay and the mean of all these scores is seven mean i'm talking about okay and deviation from the mean of the each score seven minus nine seven nine minus seven two 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 one 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 one, one something if i'm going to add up all these things what happens it will become zero so in order to not to become zero what i'm doing i'm squaring squaring the deviation once i square the deviation some average of average of squared deviation from the mean means this is the squared deviation and this is going to be the variance that we are going to get got it okay add up all the squared deviation divided by total number of values you will get 1.5 understand so here we have something called a standard deviation standard deviation is nothing but square root of variance okay square root of variance you can observe the square difference from the mean divided by n minus one okay so this represents the square root of variance standard deviation the sample standard deviation is something divided by n minus 1 this is the this is a sample which i'm showing for the for the population you i know that you can understand for the population it is n divided by n it will become okay but but this is a, this is a sample which where we can see n minus one but if it is going to be a population st standard deviation you will see capital n before okay so now let us see a small standard co standard deviation coefficient equal to small degree of variability 
a large standard deviation coefficient large variability you can see a and b four four five 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 six six one three four five six seven nine okay and here the mean of all these values become five and the mean of all these values will become five and hence the standard deviation is equal to 0.82 and here you can see the see even though the total number of values are same and also the mean is same the standard deviation is not required to be same and you can see the more standard deviation you can observe in the set b and hence this quiz 2 is going to be or sorry this is not related to the quiz and this is a different stuff so set b is going to have the large spread agree guys okay so now let us understand a teacher sets an examination for their people the teacher wants to summarize the results to the people attend as a mean and standard deviation which is standard deviation should be used guys tell me teacher sets an examination for their people the teacher want to summarize the results for their people or the students okay is it a sample standard deviation or a population standard deviation that you you will use Dinesh correct, Suresh correct, Venkat Narayana correct, Sunil correct, Arun Krishna wrong. Guys, this is a population, population data. Why? Because teacher, teacher is not trying to set an examination only for the set of students in, the, in her class. She wants to set the examination for their students. Okay, because the teacher is only interested in, in this class of peoples and nobody else. Okay. And answer this question. A researcher, a researcher has recruited males who are aged in between 45 to 65 for an exercise training study to investigate risk markers for heart disease. Which standard deviation would, would most likely be used? sample excellent okay this is a sample standard deviation okay last question you can see the answer over here itself okay one of the questions on a national consensus one of the questions on a national consensus survey asked for respondents age which standard deviation would be used to describe the variation in all ages received from the consensus okay this is population standard deviation. Okay. So, okay. So let me stop it here. Okay. And uh, measures of shape I will discuss in the Monday session. Okay. And before I'm going to start the Monday session, I will re-explain about the difference that you have asked one more time. Okay. Okay, guys, thanks for attending the session. I will just meet you again on Monday for you. See you all. Bye.